my credit score was 400 when I moved to Austin. And I've done so much work that I'm, I'm like afraid to take financial risks, right? So when we think about pivoting and we're like, yeah, I'm gonna rip the Band-Aid and blow it all up and be this full-time creator. It's like, well, how am I gonna pay rent? Like, and I have like money, okay? Like I have worked very hard. Like I can pay my rent, okay? But in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, like inflation and this and that, like, what if this happens? And like, I can't, you know, there's this deep rooted of like where it, and my therapist has talked about this, that it's the same level of trauma as a child who experiences homelessness and hunger that I experience of like, where is my next dollar gonna come from? And it's insane. Like I do about 53K a quarter right now, like easy with my eyes closed, but it's like, how am I gonna pay my groceries next week? I don't know. Welcome to Creator Debates, where we have stupid arguments to help creators make smart decisions. My name is Justin Moore, your host and the founder of Creator Wizard. Today, we're talking about whether you should trade time for money. You've seen the threads, you've seen the viral TikToks, you've seen the ads on YouTube promising endless riches if you turn your knowledge into a course or a productized service. And while that sounds nice, it can be a pretty complicated path to actually earn predictable income from a business like that. So it got me thinking, is trading time for money really that bad? I decided to chat with my friend Sarah Loretta, who was struggling with that very question. Sarah is the founder of Systems Club, a full service creative operations agency that offers fractional consulting services to help streamline and scale small teams. Put more succinctly on her LinkedIn headline, she's the girl you call when your business needs a beat down. So by the end of this episode, you'll learn the roadblocks that often prevent us from fully leveraging our expertise. Is it possible to trade time for money and make money while you sleep? And honestly, the only thing I really care about, can Sarah overcome this internal debate with herself? So let's get into it. Hey guys, I am Sarah of Systems. I'm the founder, creator, and also certified Notion consultant. And I'm a part-time creator. I am of service to my clients and my community, and I'm really on a mission to help creators and freelancers have access to business education without breaking the bank. It's really important to me that everyone has the same path to success, no matter what their budget looks like as they're getting started. And that's the biggest thing, honestly, that I struggle with is really trading my time for money because I am a person of service. I love helping people and, and doing one-off, one-on-one work. But I also know that I don't have the capacity for everybody. And so I'm excited today to really honestly talk about what it looks like to expand my business in different ways and how to kind of still de develop high quality, high value items without it being so push and pull on my side as a solopreneur. Sweet. So is this been something that you've been debating internally for a while or like what, what is, why is this an issue for you right now? Is it just like, I'm curious why, why, why are we talking today? Basically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think I have kind of a twofold problem, right? So the first is that, you know, being a certified notion consultant, there's only 54 of us in the world. I feel like I have, um, it's kind of weird to say, but like, I feel like there's a requirement for me to continually create products under the Notion umbrella and provide templates and resources because I have that title. I guess alongside of that is I have been creating stuff. I, I've had this kind of template subscription I've on and off again sold for the last three years. That is why I'm a consultant. That kind of is what paved that way for me. But I just don't have the time to maintain items to you know, when there's new features come out, like updating things. And then on the other side of that is I have been really struggling with creating high, I didn't even call it high ticket, but like mid ticket offers that aren't just like a one off little download, but really provide high value that are equal to what I do with my clients. And again, it comes back to I'm booked solid. I mean, you and I were talking recently, I have 13 active clients right now, which is wild. And so I don't even have the time to sit and develop something that could equate to people who don't necessarily have a budget to work with me. Um, and, you know, alongside of that, like, don't really need a payment plan to work with me. That's a huge mm. shift that I've I've decided that I'm making in my new year is that I'm not taking payment plans anymore, which cuts out a majority of my clientele. 
but so I need something to still support them, right? Mm. Yeah. Why? And kind of, um, because I think it goes back to being of service to people, and and I again like my whole mission is making business education and resources affordable and accessible, right? And so I charge four thousand dollars a month or mm -hmm. about ten k a quarter, which is a pretty penny, especially if I don't payment plan it, right? And so if I'm looking at me five years ago when I started my business, all that was available were these four or five figure coaching programs that you really, I, I hate to say this that I'm a very cynical individual, but like half the people who are coaching shouldn't be coaching. They've never been educators. They don't really understand how to go below like the tip of the iceberg, right? Because they're afraid to be wrong or afraid to have to, I guess, do extra work. And I actually hired a business coach. I paid almost 20 grand for someone who ghosted me and I couldn't get out of that, right? And no one I that I know that is in my community currently can afford to make a mistake like that. So if I can kind of give some extra resources, kind of help them and push them forward without them having to worry about paying rent or paying their car payment, like, why not do that, you know? Um, so that's that's where I'm at. And I'm just over templates in general. Like, I think I've ran my course with those. So it's like, okay, what's the what's the next step? What's the next level of something I can develop that is really high quality, doesn't take me necessarily a whole lot of time, but that also gets me excited to update and make time to to really nourish and, and continually improve and make better for people that are a part of it. All right, we got a lot to unpack here. Um, first things first, this this notion, no pun intended, um, that you have to continue being a notion consultant or doing that stuff yeah. because that's how you cut your teeth. I'll be yeah. full disclosure, that's how I got wrapped into your wizardry initially. That was the very <laughs> first know. project. That's the very first project I hired you on was creating some sophisticated notion templates and stuff like, so you have that capability. I think oftentimes in life and in business, we have this very delicate balance that we try to, um, you know, try to figure out how to land where it's like, okay, everyone knows me for this one thing. I'm really good at this one thing, but it doesn't really bring me the fulfillment that it should moving forward. And it's, it's, it's hard to close, to kill your darlings to some degree, to close a chapter on a, on a certain part of your life, because there's anxiety that like, if I close that chapter, if I put a stake in the ground and say, I'm no longer doing this notion stuff, like there's a lot of anxiety around like, okay, well, what if all this other new business that I've, yes, I've started to develop new income streams in other ways and new offers and stuff, but like, what if that, what if I, like something happens and I can't fall back on the notion stuff now because like I told everyone I'm not doing it anymore. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, yeah. and so it's like, that's a, it's, it's a very, very common thing. I mean, it's like, it's, um, you know, it's this whole idea of like, you know, when you fire your last freelancing client or, or offload them to someone else, um, you know, oh, wow. You mean I can't go back to doing anything, you know, for, for money. And so the first question I have for you is it's a really important one, which is that, to what degree is this kind of figuring out the whole productized service thing a factor of like, well, this is what everyone says you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to like try to leverage your time and not, you know, make money while you sleep and like make money in ways that aren't so bespoke and customized because then it's like you could make your own, this is very meta for you, but like you can make your own SOPs and all this stuff for the SOP products that you're making and all that right. stuff, right? <laughs> um, right? Right. But it's like, um, like I, 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 you know, this is a very pervasive thing in the right. X Twitter sphere and people building in public and like, yeah, this is what the conventional wisdom, right? So like, to what yeah. degree is your shift towards these new types of offers part of that or a, a true right. legitimate desire for you not to do the work that you used to previously? I think the shift, so for those who are listening slash watching that don't know, I have a productized agency. I'm the first creative operations as an agency. So I do, I don't even do Notion, which is wild. Um, I mean, I do, but it's like the last deliverable on the list, honestly. Um, so I get clients who, you know, don't want to onboard. They don't want to do the, they literally want to have the sales call and then do the deliverables. And so I come in, I onboard all their clients. I read all of the feedback that they're getting to make sure that it's actually useful so my client can can tweak and do edits. 
Um, I also have clients that I'm reworking their org chart and developing new roles for their team. And it's crazy because I literally did this in my day job before I started freelancing, but I didn't know that you could freelance and do it. Like I had no idea. And so I just kind of did things that I did creatively on the side. And I kick myself a lot because I feel like I took a lot of detours to get back to what I actually enjoy doing, which is data and processes and really like the bigger picture, right? Like I even I even help clients like launch their products, launch their courses. I do all the video editing. I upload to Thinkific. I do the strategy. And so Notion, you know, is interesting because it's always like the last item. Uh, but people find me through Notion, which is interesting, but they book me for entirely different things. Um, and so for me, even like when I was doing mainly Notion, right, which was last year on it, more or less, it was the strategy behind what you're doing. And Notion was just a supporting tool to get there. So for instance, like with you, right, and the sponsorship tracker, it just happens to live in Notion, but you have a whole framework and methodology. It doesn't matter what tool you're using to teach it, right? Mm. Um, And so that's really like the shift that I've seen is I think, you know, even though I have the title of certified Notion consultant, um, people come to me more for the leadership and not really like, oh, build me this dashboard, you know? Um, It's how can we really streamline so we can provide more value, so we can scale, so we can hire a better team. Um, So yeah, so that, I hope that answers your question. It does. Um, So like, I don't even like do no (laughs) shit. Okay. So because we're friends and I know a little bit of context behind these struggles that you're having, I need to yep. challenge you on something because- Challenge you, me, I love it. Because Sarah, you talk a big game, okay? You talk a big game about the service and the impact that you wanna have, and I think it's fantastic. I mean, you, you come from a place of real empathy, and I love it, but I think the anxiety that you have around getting there logistically from an operational bandwidth perspective there's no way that you're ever going to have the impact that you want to have doing this all yourself there's literally no possible way you can do it and so i know i feel like it's as much about you like treading water right here like trying to Mm -hmm. be like man i want to have all this impact but i've got 13 clients and they're all paying me pretty good money but it's like i can't i'm working in the business on on the business so like how can i possibly ever do this and so we have to talk about personnel like that. Like to me, this is the most obvious like elephant in the room. We're not talking about it. Why on earth do you feel as though you can't? Because I know this about you. Don't have anyone else. You're doing it all. Like what? What? What is the PTSD from your past of hiring or past experience or whatever that is preventing you from like the ob? Like I, I say obvious, <laughs> but like the obvious yeah. to me, the obvious thing would be like yeah. I need help. Like let me find someone, yeah. train them, help them with some of the lower leverage stuff that I can you know that. I don't have to be do, like uploading stuff to Thinkific or you, you, I remember you took my sales pages <laughs> from Thinkific, ported them all over. I remember you texted me. You were like, oh man, I, I couldn't figure out how to do this automatically. So I'm just drinking wine and watching Friday night lights and doing this. It's going to take me six hours, but I'm going to do it myself. I re- literally remember this text. Was just, I read it to my wife. I was like, Sarah is insane. Like this is what the heck is she doing? <laughs> and so, so like, why are you doing that? So for those also watching and listening, Justin and I hung out at Bid Summit and he already gave me this talk. So we're just recording it now. Uh, but honestly, like, so after Vid Summit this weekend, I've really sat and thought a lot about this too. And I actually fired three clients yesterday, which broke my heart. Um, but I, and they did nothing wrong, which is the worst part of this. This is what yeah. a conversation with me, this is what happens after you have a conversation. Wow, yeah. I didn't know Literally, I had that much I was power. Like, I, don't want Justin. <laughs> I was like, Justin can't be disappointed in me anymore, okay? No. Um, so honestly, no. So I have, I had, okay. So I have half of my clients who are not on my productized model. They kind of came in before I launched that. God, it's only been like, I think three months, three or four months since I went productized. And so I had agreed to a lot of projects beforehand. Um, And me being the yes person that I am, I know this is a safe space. um, I very much said yes to a few projects that were way under what I normally charge. Um, And I agreed to payment plans when I knew like, "Mm, shouldn't have done that. But if that helps the person get to where they are, I'm cool. As long as the stuff's paid, I personally like I don't care 
I bring in enough a month that like a payment plan doesn't bother me. However, I have fallen in a really bad habit that because I am now productized, I only look at my Stripe account. I rarely look at FreshBooks anymore, Mm. which is a very bad habit I've picked up. And I realized that three of my clients were like two, three months behind on their payment plans. And it was like struggle to get them to get what I needed from them. And the projects just kept like dragging on, dragging on. And so all last week I was like, man, I have to let them go. Like, I just Mm. know, like, I don't have the energy. I'm done with the project in my mind. Like, I've done what I agreed to. And so I emailed them and two of them, I gave them full refunds back. And I'm like, hey, like, go take this money, take it to someone who can finish this project out for you. Like, no hard feelings. So sorry, basically. They were fine. They were like, totally, totally understand. Um, And the biggest thing was like, you're not paying me. Like, just go. Right, exactly. (laughs) Right, right, Um, right. So I definitely like I've I sat with myself and I and I made some hard rules. I'm no longer doing payment plans, um, which means that all of my projects are 4K or higher one month flat. Um, I'm also prioritizing quarterly clients over monthly clients. Mm -hmm. Um, I also one of the clients I fired. I've had a lot of issues with the when the fact that like it's like, well, what am I paying for every month? And it's like, bro, look at your roadmap. Like you literally can see week to week what I've accomplished for you. Like, I don't know how else I can hold your hand. Um, Mm. So those I have lots of changes. I also have four clients that are offboarding like literally tomorrow. So Mm. I am down to like five. Um, Wow. Which is really nice. Um, but how do you feel about that? How, like, how does your mind? Oh God, I feel really that? good. No, I mm-hmm. feel really good. I I have held on a lot of guilt because, and this goes back to like trading time for money, right? And like being a people pleaser. But I I I'm not a quitter, right? And so if I agree to something, and this answers your question about hiring people, I promise. Um, is that if I agree to doing your project, I do everything in my power to finish it. Like it re- I rarely let clients go. This is like the first time this year that I've let anybody go, regardless of like if we like each other or not. Um, and this year, I feel like it was dead, dead, dead. And then all of a sudden I blew up and mm. everybody and their sister was hiring me. And because... And I feel like a lot of you listening probably have gone through dry spells as creators or freelancers, whatever title you use, that you're like, you you go, fall back into this mindset of like, oh my God, I have to make money, right? Because like, you've been saving, you've been doing good, but it's really slow. And so for me, going into this transition of being productized and knowing, you know, I want to release some new things that we can talk about. Um, but you know, like I, I was just like, let me just say yes. Let me just like get this money racked back up because I was paying somebody 3K a month and was mm. getting nothing in return. And I, that person was on my team for over a year. And mm. it was the worst, I think, position I should have hired for. I think I hired the wrong role, not the person, but I didn't need that role on my team. And so I have been for the last six months honestly straight working in reactionary mode like because things are just piling on and piling on I don't have time to go and hire someone and then be like do you know thinkific like I need you to like figure this out when I could just get it done right because I had I've had so much piled on that it's like you know I had a month to do a project and all of a sudden it's due in three days I don't have time to offload it to somebody that's not fair to them you know and so I've had really poor planning because of how everything, I mean, honestly, like my productized stuff, I had four clients on board in a 10 day window, like mm. was not expecting it. So like I took down the ability to auto book me like that is not a thing anymore. Uh, I learned my lesson. They are great clients, uh, but I'll never do that again. So mm. that my my next place is that I really want to hire a VA that I mm-hmm. trust and I that is literally a carbon copy of me. Like, I need somebody that I can trust to just respond to an email and put it on the to-do list. Like, I don't need to, like, have to look at what you're responding or how you're responding. Like, you just need to do it and go. Do it and go because that's how I work. Um, And I haven't in the past – I say this with love, but the people I've brought on my team, there's this element of, oh, my God, it's Sarah. Like, it's like I'm put on this weird pedestal for some reason and – once they get over like that I'm a real person and I'm not just this YouTube person and I have all these accolades, then it's like, oh, the like does potential equal profit, right? And it shouldn't take me 90 days to figure that out about somebody. 
Um, so that's like, and I know that that sounds really messed up and it's mean, but I think like I've been in business too long to, I don't want to be working with interns, you know, like I need somebody who has the experience and I don't need to wait to see it show up. Two things here. Um, thank you for the vulnerability. People are going to um, hate me when they hear They're this. not going to hate you. <laughs> no, because you're, you're being vulnerable about real stuff, the guilt, the people pleasing, the, yeah. you know, PTSD from past hiring decisions. Like these are all real things. Um, yeah. And so don't apologize. Like this is, this is, I think some people feel these things as well who might be listening or watching. So Sarah, talk to me about like your life and growing up that, um, you know, is leading you to have some of these concerns and anxieties around the decisions that you make in the, in the future. So for a very simple context, um, many of you who know me probably know this. I put my dad in prison when I was 15 um, and I've been on my own since I was 17. So for me, like there is no one else. Like I can't, I've never been able to be like, oh my God, I need $20 for gas. Like I'm going to go call my mom. Right. And so there's a lot of me underlying and alongside of that. My mother stole my credit several times growing up. Like when I was, when I turned 18, I found out I had 60K racked up in debt that she racked up in credit cards. So I had that. Um, they rented a car in my name when I was a baby. I didn't get that off my credit just until I was 25. Okay. And I literally turned 30 last week. So there's a lot of me that I have had to work through very deeply rooted financial trauma um alongside of like all the other trauma in my life right like abuse and all that crap um emotion abandonment and so I am in the first time in my life where I can say like every dollar is mine I can do whatever I want with it I can invest in stocks I love the stock market like I like secure stocks let's be clear here okay like I invest in like garbage companies like I love secure stocks um I also like love betting on boxing matches and like you know like doing things and it's like wow like it's my money I don't have to fix my problems anymore which literally took me years like when I moved to Austin I moved here at 18 to teach STEM I did AmeriCorps and my credit my credit score was 400 when I moved to Austin and I've done so much work that I'm I'm like afraid to take financial risks right so when we think about pivoting and we're like, yeah, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid and blow it all up and be this full-time creator. It's like, well, how am I going to pay rent? Like, and I have, like, money, okay? Like, I have worked very hard. Like, I can pay my rent, okay? But in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, like, inflation and this and that. Like, what if this happens? And, like, I can't, you know, there's this deep-rooted of, like, where it in. My therapist has talked about this, that it's the same level of trauma as a child who experiences homelessness and hunger, that I experience of like, where is my next dollar going to come from? And it's insane. Like I do about 53K a quarter right now, like easy with my eyes closed. But it's like, how am I going to pay my groceries next week? I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> because I still I and this is a really good habit that I've had. I don't pay myself still to this day. I do not pay myself more than my nonprofit salary six years ago. I pay myself 3K a month. It pays my rent, my car. my gr I'm, I'm good. And I'm solid and I don't spend extra money. So this like fear that like I can't pivot because I'm like broke is insane to me. But it's literally the one thing in therapy I've never been able to get over. 100%. Wow. So that's like a big thing that yeah. I I don't even like talk about it in my content. I've shared about it a little bit. But like I think that's a big reason too why my mission is to make business education affordable and accessible because one like. I went to college because I thought that was like the only place I was going to get value, like I was going to be valued at. As a millennial, we all know that. You have to go to college. Never used my degree once, right? But I worked really hard and I graduated with two degrees, only owing 12K. Like I worked my butt off, right? And then, you know, but I know that I am very fortunate, right? Like I had the ability to Google and find resources. But people that want to make this pivot and come into freelancing and be their own boss, don't have that kind of flexibility. There's no grants to go take a coaching program. Like, unless like, you know, with you, you give a scholarship, you give a scholarship here or there, but like, you can't like apply to take somebody, you know, right. like to have scholarships and grants. And so for me, like I had this one workshop I was charging $47 a month for, or $47 for, for the workshop. 
And people are like, you have to triple this price. You have like this workshop is literally worth like thousands. And I'm like, but if it helps someone make a thousand dollars, I don't care that I made 50 on it because they didn't have access to this information. And like even at Vid Summit last week, I sat in the volunteer room and taught that workshop to a room of 20 volunteers. Just did it because we we're just talking about it. And like, it doesn't hurt me, you know, like it's just information. And that's for me, giving back in that way, I think also releases that financial burden in my mind that I'm I'm helping someone who might be afraid to spend the money that they don't have, right? Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> well. <laughs> that's first of the all, background. <laughs> first of all, thank you so much for having the vulnerability to share that. I know that I know that's Young. not not easy. Um, I, I do want to say wish one, I could stop one thing. Laughing about it because I no make a joke no. I mean it's, it's okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, it, like I, I think if laughter is the is the best method for you yeah. to to you know cope with it or yeah. get over it and you know deal with all that, um, that's totally valid. You know, um, I just want to say something knowing that that's the context of this conversation um, is that it's not necessarily your job or responsibility to fix everyone's problems and everyone's business. And yes, the methodologies and the, and the approaches that you have are amazing and all that stuff too. Um, but it's not fair to yourself to shoulder that entire burden, like wanting to serve as many people as possible is an amazing mission. But I would just say and slash caution you that you can have an amazing impact in this world without guilting yourself that you're not impacting more people. And, and you shouldn't let that responsibility that you have cause you to make decisions that are unsound for your business and or mental yep. state. That's just like, I just wanted to say that. And I, I just was feeling it and I don't know how you receive that, but like I, I can sense that, that that's like a, a really challenging balance for you. Well, and I think that goes back to us talking about getting rid of clients, right? Because I have I have finally started to listen to that. Like literally that's been in my gut, in my chakras, right? <laughs> that of what you just said. And um and I've had to learn the hard way, like people, I can't fix everyone, which is fine, right? Like I'm not in the business of fixing people. I'm not Olivia Pope. But I also, I need to recognize that people need to also hold themselves accountable if I am holding them accountable. If they can't, they're not the, they're not the audience for me. And, and so that is why I've started to let people go. Cause I'm like, I can tell, I can tell you're not holding your own self accountable. Like, you know, and that's, those are the hard rules that I've put on myself for the next, you know, moving forward year, whatever, however long I'm doing this, um, is like, you have to like want success for yourself. And like, outsourcing to one person is not the answer to do that. They're not going to, they're not going to fix everything for you. Um, so yeah, I, trust me, I, I've been sitting on it for a while. <laughs> Fast forward into the future, five years. Um, what does the ideal business setup for Sarah look like? What does the team look like? Where, where, where this, this image in your mind of like what you, where you want to be, paint that picture for me. And then let's, then let's reverse engineer it. This episode is brought to you by ConvertKit and their creator network. If you're struggling to find time to grow your email list, I've got some super exciting news to share that'll level up your newsletter. ConvertKit just launched the creator network so creators like us can partner with each other to grow our newsletter subscribers. Imagine recommending awesome creators to your new subscribers and in return, having them recommend you to their engaged audience. It's a game-changing win-win scenario. What makes the creator network so special? Well, it simplifies list growth for busy creators. In less than 10 minutes, you'll be able to join, find similar creator newsletters, and begin swapping recommendations. You'll be amazed by how your email subscribers grow on autopilot. I joined not too long ago, and I've gained almost a thousand additional subscribers without doing anything. <laughs> Pretty dope, right? So you can join the creator network today by clicking the link below or visiting creatornetwork.com. That's creatornetwork.com. Well, I've never told anybody, um, but I want to build an app. I want to build a productivity tool. So, and specifically for solopreneurs, because I feel like all these tools, like 
love Notion. Obviously, don't come for me in the comments. Um, but, you know, I have tools every week that are like, hey, can you beta test this? Can you, we want you to try our software, yada, yada, right? Most of them are brand deals. Most of the tools are trash. Um, and it's not to say that people aren't trying, but like, why would you come to me and tell me flat out, oh, we're not prioritizing an API? So you want me to like manually enter my leads into your tool? No, like I'm not doing that. Um, and all of a lot of these tools are all team based. No one is really building a tool for freelancers. And so in a dream world in five years, if I can afford an engineer or developer or whatever, I would love to merge my worlds where I God, this is all IP. OK, no one steal this idea because yeah. I've never <laughs> talked about it publicly. I will literally come find you. <laughs> um, but all of the stuff that I teach in my content subscription, because you know that I have that I drip content weekly and it's going smashingly well, is that I want to mirror that with a productivity tool. So add, so it like auto tracks your time for how long you're onboarding clients, how many times you're manually creating a proposal. And it literally pushes you to automate things. It pushes you to templatize things and it pushes you to actually review your projects and improve from there. Um, and so it's basically like an operations brain built in to this tool to like kind of like, you know, like Ash Jeeves or like the little paperclip in Microsoft mm -hmm. Office. Like I want it to be like that um, and specifically help freelancers with their professional development while they are doing the projects and vice versa. Um, and so in a dream world, that's where I'm going to be. But also, I hope that my novel is done by then because personally, I've been writing a novel for four years and I want to turn it into a TV show. And so that is, I need to have it done. <laughs> mm. Five years. So personally, like, that's where I'm at is I want to have my content subscription. I'd love to have my app. And I don't, I don't really want to be doing one-on-one -on -one work, but I don't hate it. I think that's like the other thing that people get wrong about me is I love doing one-on-one -on -one work and I also love creating. And I think that you can do part-time both and be successful because I've made it happen you know it's just a matter of of finding the balance of what is more important when and then when the other thing is more important how do you still fulfill that bucket without burning out you know so the um practical justin would say <laughs> okay in f if if in five years your your product is the is the one of the primary engines of the business <laughs> um, then practical Justin would say, well, maybe the next three and a half years should be spent on aud uh, audience growth. Yeah. Where uh, you are just going full court press on productivity content and writing and becoming the thought leader, speaking, doing all the things, getting a 100K newsletter um, so that when you release the app, it's not to crickets. Um, yep. so... Well, and that's my struggle with the time versus money, right? Because it's like I have. Great I'm not saying that's content. right or wrong, by the way. No, no, I'm not no, saying that's right or wrong. I'm, I'm just saying, like, like in a dream world, yeah, I would love thread. that. Yeah, I would love that because my God, my newsletter literally converts at like 63. percent Like I don't publish it publicly. Like you know, like I've got all these paid members that are finding me out of the woodwork. I just, and that's too why I want to develop these playbooks, which is like a lower ticket DIY option. Uh, and when I say lower ticket, I'm still talking like two grand, like not like a little thirty dollar product. Um, is I want to I want to make at least three clients worth a month in this, so I can only have two clients on one on one at a time. That's my goal in the next six months is to be down to only two one on one clients, and the rest be this DIY option. And what I'm thinking is just doing like an upsell for like an audit, like consulting call, kind of like what you do. Um, and then, so they do the DIY option, they can upsell and book me to like audit everything. And that's all I'm doing on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So, and then just creating content actually publicly. <laughs> so I only have it behind my paywall right now. <laughs> would you be sad if you, like how would you feel emotionally if you stopped working with people one-on-one? -on -one? I have two specific clients right now that I really want to be with long term but I also know that I'm setting them up to not need me long term and to eventually hire out and I think I'm totally fine with that as I feel fulfillment and not disappointment or sadness when people get what they actually asked for from me right like 
if I delivered what I need, if you don't want to move forward with me, like that's cool because I did what I agreed to and and we're rocking and rolling. Um, I would feel sad if I hit, and I don't think I'm on this path right now, but when I owned my design agency before, I very clearly hit a burnout phase because again, I made an offer that got really popular and I had a new client every 10 days for over a year. It was wild. Um, And so I know what that feels like and having to forcibly shut your business down from burnout made me sad. It like killed me. Um, And so I'm trying to do everything I can now to not reach that. And so whether I get acquired, I sell my company or I exit because I want to do something else, I think the stuff that I've done so far already, I'll feel great about it. Um, But I still, what would make me sad is removing all elements of serving creators and freelancers. You know, I have to have something, regardless of what it looks like, I just have to do something, right? Um, So yeah, I don't ever see myself like moving into the woods and never talking to people again. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, I got you. Um, But yeah, so. I got you. I don't know. I think, I think, you know, the, it's something that I've been consciously thinking about too, even for my own business is like, you know, as I've been experimenting with the live cohort of my program and an a a, uh, on-demand version of the program. um, One thing that I just want to touch upon, which I think is a really challenging mental transition, I think for creators, teachers, coaches, et cetera, who are educating people around stuff is that when you are doing one-on-one and you're doing coaching and things like that, there's like a much higher expectation for uh, taking someone from point A to point B. Like there is some sort of tangible transformation or output or outcome from that engagement, right? And one of the hurdles that I had to come over mentally when I started working with more and more creators, because like in the beginning, I was always like, I want to get people brand deals. Like I want to get them more, you know, (laughs) make more money, like literally getting like deals where it's like direct ROI. They invest, you know, a couple grand with me. And then it's like, they're making 10, you know, K, you know, like a hundred K like all it's like this amazing ROI. Right. Cause I was like, that's the dream. Right. But when I started double clicking on the surveys that people started doing after participating in my primary offer, I was so taken with people, a lot of all these, this big cohort of people who would say, even though I didn't get a brand deal, this was still so worth it for me. Like I feel so much more equipped to handle and so much more prepared. And I took this course knowing what's going to come in my business. And I'm saying this to you now because I think that this is an important thing for you to hear as you transition from these one-on-one clients is that there's probably going to be a lot of people where even though you have this service mindset and you're such a giver and you want people to have these, these outcomes, you're going to start probably onboarding a lot of clients who they may not see these like giant tangible changes, quote unquote, in their business tooling and operations and all this stuff, but they just feel so much more equipped um, and prepared to handle what's, what's going to come for them down the line. And so, um, yeah, I think that unless you you make peace with that, it's going to be really difficult for you to scale the business in the way that you want without burning out. Because it's like if you have this, like I'm this, I feel like I'm the same way as you. I'm just, I I think I'm a little bit better at like compartmentalizing that part of my brain because I know I can't do it all. I get so, if you saw my DMs and you saw my emails, it's just like I, you know. 32,000 creators, every email I send out, I literally am getting hundreds of replies. So it's like, I endeavor to try to like build the team and all this stuff to like really try to engage with as many people as possible, but it's impossible. It really is impossible. And so, um, yeah. yeah. And so it's like, I think that that, this is, I feel like a major thing for you is to like realize like, okay, even though I'm a giver, if I want to have the higher level impact that I want to, it's probably going to mean making peace with, um, not getting these like crazy like transformations with for everyone totally and that's i think you know a big reason to why i'm developing more of this like diy i'm calling them playbooks i don't even know if that's right but that's what we're working with right now um because a lot of people who have hired me like i i'm a data girly right like i i look at trends and that's honestly why i transitioned back into operations 
because I kept getting design clients who were like, a logo is going to make me money. And I'm like, no, honey, it's not like and I'm sitting here like setting people's pricing, helping them figure out manufacturing like that's not design and branding. And so I kept continually getting those clients. And it's like, oh, like people are coming to me for this, like even though they're not realizing like that's a trend I need to follow and shift. Right. And I've been in this place right now where it's like now I'm getting clients who and I have for a while um where the FOMO of being on Notion is real everybody wants to be on Notion which is fine but then I'm doing all this work and I'm building all this stuff out I literally had a client today who I'm letting go that literally was like yeah I'm just not even gonna use anything you built and it's like then what am I spending my time on like why why am I doing this if you're not even gonna take the time to like learn and use what you asked me for, right? And so that's a big reason too why I want to shift into offering a DIY thing because then there's this there's this release of me. How do I say it? I can still serve in that way and I know that I can, but I also carry a lot of guilt when people do not hold themselves accountable. When it's like, could I have done more? Like this client today, right? It's like, Could I have done more to have them use their Notion account that they wanted, they paid me for? And the answer is no. Like if they realized it wasn't for them, that has nothing to do with me. And I think removing that one-on-one relationship and putting it the responsibility on them to say, hey, like you want this, you build it, follow my follow my entire guide and videos and all of that and use my templates, call it a day. And if it works, it works. And if not, cool, right? Um, and that that's something that I struggle with more is the, Sarah, the uh, sorry holding. to cut you off. Why are you <laughs> why do you have an agency? Why do you not just if some one of your clients said, hey, will you be our director of operations? Be our COO. Just go shut it all down. Be work I, at a company internally. Like, why are you why? Why not that? Path? Yeah, I have been asked that several times from clients, actually, but they don't want to pay me more than what I charge right now. And I would want more than what I charge. So why not find a, a role that pays basis. you what you want? Because honestly, I think too, like on top of it, the people that are paying that, I don't, I wouldn't want to go to an agency. Like I, like if I'm going to go full time, it would be with like a large creator or like, like even like Vid Summit. like I'm in talks to join their team now, which is dope. Like I would love to run events. Like I think I would do operations for events really well because I've done them for 10 years. Um, and I think like working seasonally is what works best for me because I also know that I've never had a client who it's very rare that I'm like, I would give everything to like, yeah, I would drop and go full time for them. Um, because you go through these phases, right. And I think that people hold on to their business and they want to do what they want to do. And that's totally fine. Um, and so I've never found a company or a client that I'm like, yeah, like I would give everything to them. I would explore mm-hmm. it if you need someone interim for like six months or a year. Cool. Um, but I also too, like, you know, I've been doing part-time creator stuff for 10 years now. You know, I, I literally got started. I was the first person to make content about AmeriCorps. That's how I became a creator. 18, moved cross country, filmed a YouTube video, and here we are today. Um, and so I feel like there's so many opportunities that it's like, why go back to a real job when I can literally... Like, I've proven that I can create the job that I want. Um, I think now, though, I'm finally getting clients that are who I want to be working with. And not to say I haven't worked with people I don't want to work with, but I think that I'm finally, like, hitting that level as a freelancer where people look at me as a leader and not just doing what they're asking me to do. I don't know how to explain it, but, like, there's just this level in freelancing where it's, like, here are the five things I need from you. Here are the five deliverables. That's what I'm paying for. I don't want your opinion. I don't want your thoughts. Just do it. And now people are coming to me being like, you make the decisions. I'm paying you. Just get Mm -hmm. it done. Mm -hmm. And so there's like this like ego fill that I'm getting. And I'm like, yeah, like I know I can make your business better because you trust me to just do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't want to really let that go. Um, But I also know that I have built my entire business and we've talked a little bit about this, but like, I've built my entire business on pivoting, literally pivoting. I've never set a goal in my life. I've never sat and been like, yeah, I'm going to make 100 grand this year or I want to work with this or even like brand deals. Like the brand deals I've gotten have literally just landed in my lap. Like I've never 
ask somebody for a partnership. I've never reached out to me. I don't even know how to do that, Justin. Like straight up, I've never set a goal for my business and I'm going to make almost 500K this year. And it's wild because I'm not like going like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, and you know, and I work really hard for it, but I think I'm in a season turning 30 last week, opened a lot of eyes for me and a lot of doors, but Happy I'm like, birthday. I want to, thank you. How come you never um, told me? What the heck? Dang. Okay. I didn't oh, know I thought I did. Yeah. I was no, like turning 30 at Vid Summit. Oh, <laughs> dang. Oh, dang. I missed that post. Yeah. Cool. No, you're good. Happy birthday. Um, but that's like, I think I'm in a new decade where it's like my 20s were for, were for exploring. I've set a really good foundation. And now how can I kind of tone it back so I can do the personal creative stuff that like I don't want to post about, that I want to like just do and have fun and let everything else like just run itself. Um, so yeah, like literally like my novel, I tell everybody, I'm like, yeah, I've been writing a novel for a while. And they're like, this is the dopest thing in the world. Like I had no idea. And I'm like, guys, I don't have fucking time for it. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you know? so if I, so a couple things, like number one, the reason I'm asking you about all these seemingly out of left field questions about like, why aren't you going full time? Or why aren't you doing this? Or why are you doing this? It's just like, I feel like so often we get, we get blinders on of like, we just get so fixated on this next thing, the next pivot or the next offer or the next business idea. Um, and very rarely, at least I've found, was there ever anyone in my life who basically came to me and said, what if you blew it all up? What if you didn't do this thing that everyone says that you think you're supposed to do or that you think you're supposed to do? What if you took a completely orthogonal approach to this uh, or opposite direction? You just shut this thing down and go work on something else. It's like it's giving me those vibes with respect to this, the nostalgia and the love that you had from your come up, which is notion and everyone, you know, you cutting your teeth on all that. Um, but it's like, what would that mean to really, really, truly actually close the chat? Like, what would it mean to go to them and be like, hey, take me off your website? I'm not doing this anymore. Like, don't, don't come to me for that. Taking out of my bio and my headline. And like, you know, if that's, I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm just saying like, what would that like stretch your imagination there um, to, to really close the chapter. I think it's just like useful to like talk about that. Number one. Um, secondly, seems very clear to me that a major block for you, probably something to, to think and, and meditate around is now that you have parted ways with some of your clients who, you know, aren't, are bringing you a lot of joy. Um, you know, Marie Kondo style, just like, get out of here, you know, this type of thing. <laughs> get um, out. Um, Going to the goodwill, this this no, client does not spark joy. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. um, now it's like, okay, maybe I do have some time now to sit down, yeah. make some SOPs for how we, you know, properly interface with clients and do all this, you know, you know how to do it. It's just like, how do you give yourself the permission to like make that higher understand yep. that? Like if I made 500 K this year, let's just assume I'm gonna make 500 K this year or a margin of error. I can afford a, a person who is, you know, yeah, not a, you know, intern or not a, you know, not someone I'm paying, you know, super cheap yeah. salary is like, I'm going to invest in someone. Um, maybe it's part-time, whatever, just, just it. I get it. The anxiety around like, what if, yeah, this year was great, but what's next year going to look like? It's like, it's hard yeah. as a freelancer, as a creator to, to make that call and make that investment. But I think that's the next move for you. How are you? Okay. So it's all great and well, I, I'm pumping you up on this call. I can sense you're feeling <laughs> confident. Like this is really good. Let's, let's fast yeah. forward to 12, 24 hours from now. You're looking at yourself in the mirror I'm not here hyping you up. What is the th what is the thing that Sarah needs to tell herself to let your let you know that it's all going to be okay for you to continue to march down with this everything we've talked about today, all the things you know you should do, mm. you know, instead of convincing yourself that okay, wait, wait, is this a good idea? Should I yeah. really do this? What what is the, what is the thing? What's the hype track that you need to be listening to in your headphones to to pull you through the messy middle? to get on the other end where you're, you're doing the, the, uh, yeah. you know, Iron Man triathlon swimming through the water. I don't know. Um, because I'm really, I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to remove the word try from my vocabulary. That's a personal goal that I set this year. Um, again, we'll see how they go. Cause I've never set goals before. Um, but like really just saying like, okay, like I'm going to accomplish this one little thing. So right now, I'm building up. I do 12 days of giveaways every year for Christmas. I don't do Black Friday. I think Black Friday is very anxiety and stress and I don't want it and I don't like it. 
So I do 12 days of giveaways and that literally like has done so well for me the last three years that like I make a good chunk of money. I beta test new offers. And so for me between now and then, like every day, it's like, okay, like one little step to get there. So 12 days is the best it can be because I think the stuff that I'm launching this year, like secretly in there will solidify if I can do this full time um, mm. or at least like, you know, increase the the passive creator stuff like 10 to 15 percent. That's kind of my goal, which would be 60 percent creator income, 40 percent, you know, um, agency stuff. Right. Yeah. And like one on one stuff. So that's every day. I don't know. I think I am still in a reactionary period for the next like two weeks because I just took 10 days off, which was the worst idea I could have done. But I needed it and it's fine. Um, but one, it's just like, OK, just got to get these things done and then I can start like doing the hype stuff and um, and like seeing seeing longer than like a month at a time, which is where yeah. I'm at right now. So. I'm excited for you, Sarah. I think there's so many promising things on the horizon for you. I think um, as with, I mean, honestly, I think as with like a lot of creators, so much of the things that hold us back are between our ears. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, you know, we're holding on to challenges that, that even for me, like, you know, my agency failing that was, has been a big block for me in terms of growing the team for creator wizard because of everything I've yeah. gone through and, uh, during COVID and having to lay everyone off and all that stuff. It was just like, it was very raw and fresh for me in terms of that. And so it's like, it's, it's tough to like, like you said, wipe the slate clean and like feel confident that everything is going to be hunky dory moving forward. It seems like it's going well, but everything, what if, what if there's another black swan event? What if there's another, you know, thing that we can't predict. And it's just like in the, in the world of the, of being a freelancer, solopreneur creator, it's like that question will always like, if there's one, thing I can like you know but like my wife and I have been on the internet for 15 years like our, yeah. our income sources have changed so wildly over the last 15 oh. years that just like assume <laughs> that things yeah. are going like there is going to be something there is going to be something right. that comes up that throws you through a loop you're going to adapt and pivot like you always do and even if you have employees you're going to make it you're going to figure it out because you are that type of person um and like it's hard knowing that, but like, that's the hype track. I hope you hear when, you know, because it's like, you're capable. So can't wait to see what, uh, what comes next for you, Sarah. Thanks. Appreciate you as always. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>